It is a land of transitions, yet one defined as much by borders and boundaries as by continuity. Here, the great green and taconic mountains flatten and separate into the vast Champlain Valley, site of ancient seas and strange creatures of prehistory. The story is told in the rocks. Immediately to the north, Canada, as the land broadens still farther into the valley of the St. Lawrence. To the south, the lush, enveloping folds of Vermont's emerald landscape. It is a crossroads of cultures and historical pageantry, shaped first by the native peoples and touched in turn by French, British, Canadian, and American migrants, each of whom left their mark. It has been the site of mighty deeds and exceptional bravery, great cruelty and avarice, the domain of priests and smugglers, prophets and profiteers. In short, there has been much history in this place. In the midst of all, a slow, languid stream the Abnaki people call Missisquoi, the land of the flint. Tucked into the Green Mountain State's far northwestern corner, it is a crossroads of life for the animals and plants that make this place their home. It is Vermont's haven for wildlife. Missisquoi National Wildlife Refuge protrudes into Lake Champlain and its smaller offshoot to the north, Missisquoi Bay. Its meandering creeks and sloughs, marshes and bogs, islands and channels form a complex and productive water-saturated network of lands. Water, geology and topography have shaped Missisquoi and the life that finds haven here. As great continental ice sheets retreated northward, high elevation lakes ebbed and flowed in their wake. What remained were river deltas and sand gravel margins that produced a distinctive mosaic of plants found nowhere else in Vermont and in few other places in northern New England. The Missisquoi River now winds through beds of wild rice and lush stands of arrowhead, bulrush, and wild celery. Such morsels provide a tempting forage buffet for ducks, geese, and other marsh dwellers. In 1943, while in the midst of war, the federal government and the people of Vermont recognized the uniqueness of this region by creating Missisquoi National Wildlife Refuge. Managed for the people by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, this 6,600-acre refuge exists as a haven for Lake Champlain's migratory birds as they move up and down North America's Atlantic Flyway. And what a story there is to tell. Here at Missisquoi, you'll find one of Vermont's largest great blue heron rookeries located on Shad Island, where as many as 600 nests erupt every summer with the cacophony of squawks and screeches that signify new life. Most of Vermont's black terns nest on the refuge, as do a large share of our state's ospreys, which are encouraged to come here by osprey nesting platforms. Every fall, 20,000 ring-neck ducks, golden eyes, mallards, and black ducks converge at Missisquoi for feeding and resting while on their southward migration. Other birds you'll spot in seasonal abundance include bittern, bobolinks, killdeer, red-tailed hawks, and a profusion of noisy and demonstrative woodpeckers and songbirds. In their rarity, you might even spy a peregrine falcon, sedge wren, or bald eagle. But Missisquoi isn't just for the birds. Our lands are managed to preserve the natural diversity of animals and plants that intersect at this biological crossroads. Missisquoi's 900-acre woodland Maquam Bog shelters the Green Mountain State's only community of pitch pine, rhodora, and chain fern, a state-threatened species. In summer, you'll spot white-tailed deer and a variety of resident songbirds in this swampy lowland. Spiny soft-shell turtles bask in the sun's rays 
on the nearby Missisquoi River. Here, we actively manage the land to perpetuate this diversity. At Missisquoi, as at all national wildlife refuges, the hand of man is an active one. Water levels are manipulated to encourage wild rice and button bush for our black ducks and teal. Nesting structures have been employed throughout the delta to boost numbers of common golden eyes and black ducks too. Because haying, mowing, and prescribed burns discourage open fields from returning to forest, we use these techniques to produce cover for grassland birds like bobolinks, savanna sparrows, and eastern meadowlarks, and to yield the small mammals that hawks and American kestrels require as prey. It's all part of a carefully crafted plan to maintain balance among the many species you'll encounter at Missisquoi. We control non-native or exotic plants like common reed grass and purple loosestrife. If left unchecked, they would quickly overwhelm native plants. We allow limited trapping of raccoon, muskrat, and beaver to control predation on ground nesting birds and to protect our impoundment dikes and water control structures. Your first stop for a successful visit to Missisquoi National Wildlife Refuge should be our new 7,200 square foot visitor center and headquarters near Route 78's intersection with Tabor Road in West Swanton. Here, you'll discover exhibits and practical information about the refuge, its wildlife, and its natural history. You'll meet our helpful and knowledgeable staff and our partners, the Friends of Missisquoi National Wildlife Refuge. Our center is open every weekday, while the refuge itself is yours seven days a week, dawn to dusk. Nature walks, boat tours, public lectures, and special events like our popular owl prowls and woodcock walks occur throughout the year. While you're at our visitor center, we invite you to join in supporting the mission of the National Wildlife Refuge System by buying a duck stamp it's the duck stamp that created Missisquoi Refuge with the funds of hunters and other conservationists and from millions of people just like you. Our staff and volunteers from our friends group will be glad to tell you more about conservation's remarkable little stamp. We recommend you begin your Missisquoi experience on foot, either early or late in the day when animals are most active, starting on our nearby one mile loop trail it leaves our visitor center and winds through grass and shrublands, wetland forests, a buttonbush swamp, and mixed hardwoods of oak, birch, and sugar maple. Our Black Creek and Maquam Creek interpretive trails will take you through one and a half miles of maple, gray birch, swamp white oak, and ash lowlands. If you're quiet and observant, you're sure to spot red fox, white-tailed deer, and colorful patches of native wildflowers along these trails. Deeper into the refuge, the One Mile Max Ben Road and our Stephen J. Young Marsh and Old Railroad Passage Trail provide good wildlife windows for birds and marsh mammals. If you stay on the trails and move quietly, you'll be treated to so much more. And when areas are closed, know that we're often protecting sensitive habitats and bird nesting areas. Canoeists and kayakers can launch on the Missisquoi River at Louis Landing off of Vermont Route 78 for an all-day paddle around Gander and Goose Bays and back along Dead Creek to your put-in point. This circuit gives a unique waterside view of Shad Island and its great blue heron colony. Remember that open water demands even greater adherence to safe boating than our sheltered creeks and rivers. <laughs> 